As our society has become fully mediated in digital environments, social networks, using devices, mobile, uh, it's really important to start asking the questions about how we can leverage it as a, as a platform to improve our democracy. To also socialize ideas, I think about the impact of networks beyond just the digital technologies themselves, but how networks are forming. Uh, to progress you know, where we are in our national conversation, I think that the effect of the Arab Spring is also to remind us that America doesn't hold the exclusive license to innovation in democracy and citizenship. Uh, we have a lot to learn from what is continuing to happen over there. I think we're also entering into a time where individual citizens have a lot more agency in a lot more different ways. So there's, a, there's a, almost an emerging transactional identity that a person can either leverage and, and deploy online or in in in-person social settings. And if you, I think, go to most uh, public schools anywhere on the planet, you'll understand that the lines are not hard in terms of their definition. In fact, they're blurred and they're f fully integrated um, you know, into the lives of young people. And we're really debating problems that young people are gonna have to live with uh, for many generations. So in some respects, the baby boomers who help to really drive the conversation in the United States are not the dominant demographic on the planet. And our millennial generation, I think, will have to sync up with uh, this emergent global millennial generation to, uh, to really tackle some enormous challenges. I think that the nation has been in a very polarized state since the 60s. And that is largely reinforced, I think, by leadership that is from that generation. Um, and they still see the world in those terms. Young people, I think, growing up uh, in the Reagan generation and afterwards, really have had to ask more complicated questions about what is happening in our country, what it means to be American, the diversity has exploded. The old boundaries are not super useful anymore, right? And so young people have to, and I think they have in many cases, take responsibility for creating communities that work for them. I also think that there's an there's a inversion that we do, and it's not accurate. Technologies don't create communities. Communities create technologies. And if you look at low-income Americans and their ad adoption, heavy adoption of mobile, it's an indication that mobile was solving problems for those communities, which oftentimes you've got kids at home, you have both parents working, you've got kids sometimes working while they're in high school. You have enormous uh, extended networks of families that are helping to take care of each other. Mobile is the perfect technology. They created the opportunity around that. And I think that there's innovation in that approach. So I think we'll have to see uh, and understand it better. We honestly don't spend enough time studying this. We have a ton of data that we could rely on to teach us how people are actually adopting and disseminating these tools. Uh, well, there's a lot of headline grabbing. Um, there's a lot of Twitter competition in terms of audience share, um, which to me is, is not necessarily the most sophisticated way to go about figuring out what's happening.